Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan and I'm joined by Dan Bell, Director of Sales at HiFX. Welcome in, Dan, Thanks, for Gareth. our um, monthly Never a Dull Moment currencies report. Now, Dan, all eyes today, of course, were on the Federal Reserve in the US, mm -hmm. FOMC meeting. No change. They've kept their target range, as they put it, for the federal funds rate at um, a quarter to half a percentage point. Yep. Um, that was expected, but any surprise in the outlook or reaction? Yes, yeah, so no one was expecting the Fed to um, to raise interest rates today, but the comments from the Fed were a lot more downbeat and dovish than uh, than we were expecting. Um, and you know, we've seen quite a, a decent run of economic uh, data out of the U.S. over recent times. Uh, the employment situation in the U.S. has been very strong. Inflation is starting to tick up there, uh, getting closer to that two percent target. Uh, that the Fed is focused on uh, and we thought that the Fed might have been a little bit more upbeat about the economic prospects but there were certain lines within the statement um, that really underscored a, a continued concern with the, the global outlook um, and that's seen uh, the US dollar come under some selling pressure and immediate response and the market reducing the odds of uh, further rate hikes from the Fed this year. But is the market still expecting rate hikes from the Fed? Yep, the market is still expecting the Fed to raise uh, rates in the US this year um, twice. So we'll see potentially another 50 uh, basis points of rate hikes out of the US this year. Uh, and going into next year, another four rate hikes uh, next year as well. So the, overall, we still think that the Fed is, is in tightening mode. But today, they've given everyone a little bit of breathing room, I guess. Um, obviously, a lower, uh, lower rates in the US is positive for, for risk assets uh, and is negative for the US dollar. And there is talk that um, the Fed um, and other central bankers have been concerned at um, some of the US dollar strength that um, really started uh, around the middle of last year and carried through to the beginning of this year and that, uh, that hasn't been that favourable for the global economy and naturally uh, you saw a huge sell-off in, in global equity markets and commodities at the start of the year with the market positioning for further rate hikes from the Fed this year. So. I don't know, I'm not too sure if I'm going to sort of believe too much of what the Fed is saying today. I mean, I think they are giving the market a little bit of breathing room. Uh, ultimately, I think uh, the actual economic data from the, from the US will drive the outlook for rate, uh, rate hikes uh, going, going through the year. And obviously, if the economic data is more positive, the Fed will ultimately respond with rate hikes. And so what we're looking at today is possibly Fed funds rate by the end of the year up around 1%. Um, yep. That's still, that's still pretty much the, the core view and, and ultimately um, the Fed and, and the market see uh, the, the equilibrium, equilibrium for the funds rate uh, around 3.25%. Um, it seems like a long way off but um, obviously a couple of rate hikes th this year, four rate hikes into next year, taking the Fed funds rate back, back around that 3% level. Uh, is where we ultimately see it going. Um, but uh, along the way, obviously, any global uncertainty or volatility tends to, to impact that. So it be interesting to see how, uh, how that goes. And we also had the New Zealand GDP figures for the December quarter and, and, and last year out this morning. How did they um, sort of... Uh, how did the dollar react to those, I guess, in the wake of what the Fed had to say? Yep, so New Zealand's fourth quarter GDP came in stronger than expected at 0.9% for the fourth quarter, and uh, the New Zealand dollar rallied very strongly off the back of that. So um, when you look at uh, how our economy is performing, obviously, um, you know, fourth quarter GDP, it's a historical piece of data, but we are seeing some pretty strong uh, results within the services sector. As we all know, um, commodities in the rural side of the economy are struggling at the moment, particularly in the dairy sector. Um, but um, you know, you've got uh, the strength coming through from uh, housing and construction and, and obviously the tourism boom that the country is uh, experiencing at the moment and the number of uh, new migrants or short-term um, visitors coming in is supporting uh, the services side of the economy. So, you know, that's a, a positive, but I guess, you know, when you look at the big picture and certainly what's happening in Derry, there's still some uh, concerns for, for our economy th through, the, uh, through this year. Now, obviously last week we had uh, what was regarded by most of us as quite a surprise with the Reserve Bank of New Zealand cutting the OCR by 25 basis points down to that record low of 2.25%. I mean, what, what impact is, I mean, as we look back now, I guess a week later, what impact has that had on, on the New Zealand dollar and, and, and what's it going to have um, over coming weeks? 
Yeah, well, if you wanted to get the New Zealand dollar down, I mean, initially there was a, a, a short-term reaction. Uh, the Kiwi dollar fell across the board, um, and it was certainly a surprise. None, none of the local uh, analysts or economists were expecting uh, the Reserve Bank to cut interest rates, and in the most recent sort of commentary from the RBNZ, uh, they certainly weren't sort of flagging it. Um, but uh, look, they've they've looked at uh, what's going on. I think, particularly in the dairy sector, uh, and they recognise that. Um, yeah, there is going to be some, some pretty major headwinds there uh, and they need to get the currency down to, to offset the impact that uh, lower global dairy prices are having uh, on, on farmers in the country and I think that's going to continue to be uh, a key, uh, a key, a key uh, aspect of, uh, of the RBNZ's approach to monetary policy this year. Um, the market's pricing in at least another uh, 25 basis points of rate cuts from the RBNZ this year, so that would take the cash rate down to a, a new record low of 2%. And there's a few analysts out there calling for um, 50 basis points of rate cuts this year. So, um, and then going into next year, keeping the rate uh, steady uh, at around sort of 1.75% um, for most of 2017. So extremely uh, low, uh, low cash rate for the New Zealand economy. Obviously in comparison to, to a lot of other developed economies, uh, when you look across the board, um, you know, we are still relatively high, only really Australia um, you know, at 2% is, is comparable to our cash rate um, and a lot of these other central banks continuing to provide uh, stimulus through um, quantitative easing or, uh, or very, very low interest rates or in some cases negative interest rates uh, as in Japan and Europe. So. Um, the Reserve Bank's got a hard job because you know we want a lower currency, we want to offset the impact of the weaker dairy prices, but at the same time we also have uh, a very strong, uh, very strong housing market, and the risks that uh, that that poses to financial stability are um, very much front and centre. So, yeah, indeed. Now I just thought we'd uh, throw it throw it forward a little bit. Um, in Britain, they're having a referendum on their membership of the European Union in June. So this, the word Brexit has uh, been uh, been in use a lot. <laughs> yeah. um, now, obviously, the um, global financial markets worked themselves into a real frenzy a few years ago about the possibility of a Grexit, of a, of a Greek exit. Yeah. Obviously, Greece does use the euro currency. Yeah. Britain doesn't. But Britain's a much bigger economy than Greece. So what sort of reaction can we expect to see from currencies and, and financial markets, I guess, in the next few months as we build up to that referendum? Yeah, so the, the, the risk that the UK leave the Eurozone is, is already being factored in and priced into the, the, the pound. Um, the NZ dollar, for example, against the pound is, is back up around sort of 0 0.47, 0 0.48. Um, uh, towards the end of last year, we, we got down around the 0.4 level. So we've rallied pretty strongly uh, off the back of those, uh, those concerns. And um, look, financial markets like any excuse for a bit of volatility and um, and I think the Brexit uh, uh, risks uh, is, is an example of that so we don't know exactly really what impact um, an exit um, out of the Eurozone is going to have for the UK obviously uh, it's not really the same situation as Greece where um, it could trigger uh, you know a significant um, meltdown in their financial system that's not going to be the case but um, it will have an impact and uh, you know, financial market participants are, are factoring in uh, a, a, a risk factor to that, which is starting, which is weighing on the pound, and I think that's going to continue. So, I could see the pound remaining under pressure for the next few months, leading up to that referendum, um, given the, the uncertainty around the result. And another, I guess, um, interesting issue out there at the moment is the U.S. presidential elections. So we've got this. Uh, fascinating and I guess unexpected scenario on the Republican side with Donald Trump looking to looking likely to be the Republican candidate. Um, at what point and to what extent are, are, are markets going to be interested and, and possibly concerned about a potential President Trump? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's not being talked about uh, a lot in, 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 in the markets. Um, you know, clearly there is, um, it, it's highly likely that Trump will be the Republican uh, nominee. Um, but I think um, most of us are looking for, well, looking at the a Clinton-Trump showdown uh, in the, uh, for the US presidential um, race. And I think everyone is of the opinion that Clinton will, uh, Hillary Clinton will, will take that out quite easily given uh, how divisive uh, Donald Trump is. Um, but uh, tr Trump's not stupid. Uh, he, uh, you know, he, he, he plays the game well. So, 
um, the, the message and personality um, that he brings to the presidential race might actually be quite different to what we're seeing in the Republican uh, race. So you could see him actually start to deliver a, perhaps a more measured or balanced perspective um, and start to try and capture some of that, um, you know, some, some of the more uh, conservative sort of uh, middle class uh, educated vote in the US. So it's going to be an interesting and very fascinating year for American politics. Um, but, um, you know, we aren't factoring in, um, well, the market certainly aren't factoring in uh, Trump risks, so to speak, to the global economy. <laughs> Not at this point anyway. Yeah. No, no, exactly. OK, well, look, thanks a lot for that, Dan. That's Dan Bell from HiFX, and I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz with uh, our never-a-dull-moment monthly currencies report.